Hello, this is John Canalopoulos, and uh, on behalf of the uh, Topography University, I'm very pleased to share with you a small how to do with the uh, very large amount of cases we have shared with you. Let's go ahead and click on this file. This file will be shared with you in a Dropbox uh, fashion, and we've uh, grouped here the uh, cases. This is over 150 cases, as you can see on the top. Uh, let's let's check one of the top folders: virgin eyes, myopia, virgin eyes, hyperopia, cornea scars, keratoconus, uh, enhancements, post RK, post intacts, uh, among other cases. Let's go check a myopic case. So we'll open our first folder. There's about 38 cases there, and we'll pick a case in random. So we'll click on one case in random. Thank you. And here you see three folders. One folder says pre-op. One folder says uh, OR and the date of the surgery, and one folder says PO, which stands for a post-op. So in the pre-op, we'll click on the pre-op file. You have the ability, let's look at this in picture mode. So let's click all the way on the left, uh, all the way on the left. Um, there you go. So we'll see this in picture mode, and on the bottom right, you can enlarge those pictures. On the bottom right of your screen, you can enlarge those pictures. Great. So here in the pre-op information, we have uh, almost in all cases, a placido disc topography you can see here on the uh, right, uh, pentacam topography in the middle, and a OCT uh, anterior segment scan which shows cornea thickness and an epithelial map. Uh, so these are the pre-op data uh, for us to evaluate. So let's click back and go and see on the OR day. So on the OR day, what we have uh, for you is our pink sheet, which is basically the treatment planning uh, platform in which we have all the data collected for the patient. There's a series of uh, uh, autofraction keratometry, uh, the autofraction of the patient before drops, uh, the uh, glasses or contact lenses the patient is wearing, the dry refraction, a refraction after one drop of tropicamide, and autorefraction after that one drop of tropicamide in half hour, uh, and then a wavefront uh, refraction where that was available. And then uh, other data such as pupillometry, minimum cornea thickness, and what uh, our clinical refraction of treatment would be uh, in the boxes in the bottom. Uh, on the uh, right-hand side, we can see we've included for each patient the topography-guided plan if we had imported the uh, Placido Disc topography into the Wavelight treatment platform with all refraction uh, chosen to be zero. So on that platform, let's zoom that picture. Uh, thank you. So on that platform, you can see on the top uh, part of the measurements is the clinical measurement. And this is the actual clinical refraction, which for us is a mixture between the dry and the wet uh, manifest. Then on the middle uh, row, there is a measured refraction, which is what the topographer suggests as a refraction. Of course, the sphere is, uh, is really elusive because the topographer does not have any actual length data. So here we're paying attention to the amount and axis of cylinder. And in a lot of cases, you'll notice that the amount and an axis of cylinder is different from the clinical refraction. Also, other things to pay attention here is whether there's angle kappa, and angle kappa is easily uh, recognized here uh, if we correlate the normalization that the laser wants to do in relation to the pupillary aperture, which is the black uh, round uh, circle on the treatment plan, which is on the bottom right. And then in the modification, we're putting refraction for sphere and cylinder zero, just to be able to see that image and see how the topography guided software will manipulate the result. In um, all cases, we've included our treatment plan. Let's close this window. In this particular case, you can see we have the PDF, the, the final report from the refractive suite. Let's go ahead and click on that. And you can see uh, if we scroll down this PDF, what was the final refraction, the flaps created, and the final refraction treated in this patient, left and right eye. And let's scroll all the way down. Uh, and also some cycle rotation and tracking data that you can see uh, at the uh, um, end of the procedure. And let's go click out of this wi uh, window and go to the post-op data. So in each given case, we also have the post-op data here. Let's zoom on these uh, pictures where we have a uh, final uh, refraction, which is our uh, flow sheet. Uh, let's click on that. 
and then we have uh, an OCT map uh, of the uh, cornea thickness and the epithelium of the cornea and then we have a post-op pentacam map and then a comparison of the pre and post pentacam um, and uh, again uh, in uh, uh, sagittal anterior segment uh, curvature and let's click on the topometric indices which is the last picture on the right here the topometric indices paying more attention here on the IHD index of high decentration before and after surgery and uh, as a means of uh, documenting normality of the cornea. So this may sound complicated, we'll go through it uh, during the course, but please feel free to endeavor in some of these cases. We'll quickly go to a keratoconus case where the irregularities will be far more interesting. Uh, so we'll go again to the group of cases, we'll pick a keratoconic case and um, we'll just pick one in random. And same theme here, we have the pre-ops, Let's look at the pictures from that. We'll zoom the pictures up and we have the pentacam and placido disc topography. Very impressive cone here, by the way. And then we'll click on the OR where again we have our flow sheet of refraction. Uh, and uh, on the far right, let's click on that. The topography guided uh, suggested correction if we zero the sphere and cylinder. And again, there's a lot of discrepancy between our clinical cylinder axis and amount to the topographic and we always lean uh, towards the axis of the topographic and towards the uh, magnitude of cylinder of the topographic as well. So let's click out of this and we'll see in this particular case the post-op data as well. Um, so the post-op data we can see here again uh, a, a late post-op exam probably six months to a year uh, uh, next to that, OCT, uh, cornea pachymetry and epithelial maps, a sag sagittal OCT image to show the depth of cross-linking achieved, uh, and then pentacam, pentacam comparisons, and topometric comparisons. So this is uh, your guide through this large uh, number of cases. Feel free to uh, send us questions on any of them beforehand, and we'll certainly have a lot of time to discuss uh, in the upcoming meeting. Next one being in Chicago and the one after next being in Los Angeles just before the ACRS on May 4th. Uh, thanks so much for your attention.